still as possible. Okay, so we are at take two of <laughs> Go To Kitchens. We are making a soup that was my great grandma Magaz, and I'm here in my dad's kitchen in Fort Worth, Texas. And you're looking at the ingredients for the soup, um, and we're gonna make this together. And I'm gonna let dad tell a little story as we cook along here about uh, my great grandparents and um, how the soup came about. So what we have in the soup today is going to be diced tomatoes with medium gr green chilies. We have uh, organic ranchero beans, a little bit different than a pinto bean. Ranchero beans are gonna have some extra ingredients in them like uh, tomato paste and some spices, some chili powder, some cumin, that sort of thing and a organic minestrone soup. Now then, if you were so inclined, you could make all of these things from scratch and add them to your soup, but we wanted, our goal was to make it fast and easy, one pot meal. We're gonna use a big stock pot. Uh, this is a pound of ground turkey. This is three ears of corn, of course, and then we have some spring onions. If you have somebody in your family who is sensitive to onions, doesn't like them, gives them indigestion, doesn't want to um, eat an onion, Spring onions are great for that. They have a mild flavor um, and they're super good for you. And you can, you can eat an onion without the repercussions of the indigestion if you have somebody who's sensitive to that. So, all right, so we're gonna start off. This is my dad and he's going to put uh, this turkey into this pot and he's gonna fry that. I'm gonna cut some onions while he's doing that. So the first step is to put the onions and the turkey in your stock pot and and fry those, and I don't have a knife. I think it's over on the strainer, actually, right behind me. There we go, thank you. Yeah, so you wanna start that up or you wanna wait for me? No, you can wait for the onion. Okay, why don't you tell us a story? All right, this, uh, this soup was originally designed to <clears throat> feed a lot of people. <clears throat> it was on the farm, it was on, <coughs> Excuse me, a full working farm, uh, a large farm. They raised all their own food, all their own beef, all their own pork, chicken, all the poultry, all the vegetables. And uh, at harvest time, it wasn't just <coughs> going out to the field and harvesting cotton or sorghum. It was slaughtering cattle and pork and harvesting the garden, which was about two acres. That's a big garden. <clears throat> that fed the farmhands. And uh, had two uncles, J.R. J.D., who lived on the farm, who worked the farm. And uh, my grandpa died in 1955. And uh, J.R. J.D. and Grandma worked the farm, and Grandma's job was to cook for all these farmhands, and they would bring in immigrants from Mexico to work the field and do the chores around the farm. And uh, usually they were four to five uh, hired hands that they bring in from Mexico, and they had their own bunkhouse. And Grandma did all the cooking for all the farmhands, and uh, and. <clears throat> Grandma's house was kind of a hub for the whole community, the farming community, because every weekend people from all over would come to Grandma to eat because this is what she did from sun up till sundown was cooked. Made all the own bread. Uh, they even took their corn and their wheat to the uh, harvest grain mill in Plains, Texas, and they had their meals ground. The only thing that they actually bought was sugar, coffee, uh, tea, that kind of thing. Everything else was uh, raised on the farm. And they had a cellar where all the vegetables that they would harvest was uh, canned and uh, stored for winter. Uh, the pork and the beef, uh, they would smoke and uh, preserve in the smokehouse. And uh, let me get this started here. So we just, I just chopped up the onions. We put all of those. Um, I can't remember how many there were. Let's just count them so we know. Uh, four, eight. 
There were nine spring onions in there that I chopped uh, coarsely and put those into down into the ground turkey. And uh, he's gonna he's gonna uh, kind of mix those together and let them cook here over the stove. They uh, <clears throat> on the farm to sustain them through the winter. Uh, they would dig a trench in the ground about two and a half foot, three foot deep and about two to three foot wide. And they would line the bottom of the, this trench with uh, straw and uh, put the potatoes, all their root crops, the potatoes, carrots, beets, uh, onions, <clears throat> all of those type of, uh, even cabbage they stored in the ground. A uh, cabbage would keep a long time uh, if it's uh, not exposed to oxygen, in fact, a lot of these vegetables in the ground like that were not exposed to oxygen, and that's why they kept fresh for so long they didn't oxidize. And then they'd put a layer of straw on top of uh, the vegetables and cover it with a tarp, and then they'd cover over with uh, dirt. And then whenever they need, they'd just go out and dig up a portion of what they need and recover it. What kind of vegetables did they use in that? All the root crops. Like beets, root vegetables? Beets, beets, carrots. So things that grow in the ground. Yeah, root crop. Okay. Maybe not everybody knows what a root crop is, so that's why I ask. And uh, <clears throat> and then all the vegetable crops are canned and put into the cellar. And uh, it was, uh, on the weekends was, uh, everybody comes from miles around. People come all the way from Amarillo up to Plainview. Uh, That's in the panhandle of Texas, by the way, if you don't want to dig out a map. And it's an 80-mile trip from Amarillo to Grandma's house, and it was a little community called Finney Switch. It was a railroad track run through there, and it was a switch house for the train. And the uh, population of Finney was about 20 people. And uh, that was a community where Grandma lived. had a little store there, country store. But uh, all of their produce, all of their uh, beef, pork, everything was supplied by the farm, uh, raised on the farm. All their fertilizer, except for the commercial crops like cotton or sorghum, they used chemical fertilizers. But the garden crops, they had 12 milk cows, uh, 500 chickens at a time. Grandma would buy 500 uh, baby chicks and uh, raise them for the market. We called them pullets. And then she had about... Uh, That's a lot of chicken, 500 chickens. She had about four dozen laying hens, which they would take the eggs to market uh, once a month. And on their back porch, they had a, the, the house was supplied water by a windmill, and on the back porch it had a trough, and the water that come out of the ground up there was real cold. They had a trough and then the milk and uh, any of the perishables, they would uh, bottle, they'd, they'd separate the cream from the milk and uh, they'd put in cans and put them in this trough where water would run from the windmill through this trough to keep them cool until it was time for market, till they got enough to load to take to market. And, uh, I think that I think in modern days today that we would we would absolutely give our right arm to be able to witness some of these practices because I think um, as we've become desensitized to just going to the grocery store or going to a restaurant which is even worse and buying our food um, we don't realize how much work goes into getting what we eat on the table. I mean, it goes way beyond what we're doing here in the kitchen and goes into the, the food production. And there are so many of us on the planet to feed, I think we lose sight of, of how valuable it would be to uh, have those resources to be able to do that, to be fully sustainable on a farm. It would be amazing. And I wish that we had could have a lecture from my great grandmother about how to do that. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry to interrupt. It was just amazing. Oh, by the way, I'm cutting up this corn. That's going to go down into the into the soup um, as we add the other ingredients as the meat gets done there. So, go ahead, Dad. They had a silo in uh, where they store grain, and they had a a, a feed 
a, a feed barn. And in these feed barns were uh, where they stored their sorghums and uh, feed stock for their cattle and their chickens. And uh, my job, we'd go visit during the, when school was out, we'd go stay with grandma uh, on the farm. And uh, my job was to gather the eggs, to feed the chickens, and feed the cow, the milk cow. And uh, they'd take the feed shocks out of the field and they'd grind them up and, uh, and auger them into this chute in this uh, barn in the same way with uh, Milo or maize or whatever you want. What's Milo? I don't know what Milo is. Sorghum. What's sorghum? Like a, like what kind of crop? What do we use it for today? A sorghum syrup. Okay. For, so like a sugar, a base, a sugar base. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and this is what they feed the chickens and the turkeys. Uh, yeah, what Leslie was saying with the uh, raising all this stuff if, if, if a man ever went out and cleaned 500 turkeys you know what kind of job that is <clears throat> i mean i know there are people that do that today but it's it's a it's well a, everything's automated today yeah but, it's but a, back then it wasn't automated and it, this wasn't that long ago this was in the 50s this was not, yeah 1955. yeah it's amazing uh, this is ready for whatever okay so let's have a look at this you can see that there's a little liquid has cooked out of the onions and uh, out of the turkey. We're going to leave that in there. We did a test run yesterday. I'll call it a test run. I forgot to turn the camera on. We had this great episode and I forgot to turn the camera on. Um, but it had this liquid in here yesterday and we decided to drain it and that was a mistake. We should have left it in. So we're going to leave it in today. <clears throat> well, this recipe was to, and, and she had this often, like, uh, this was a staple. This this was this was once every week or two weeks. This was made to feed all the hens. And at breakfast time, it wasn't just going and cooking a few eggs. I mean, she she cooked two or three dozen eggs, and she made all the bread <clears throat> from the grain that they had processed that they grew on their farm. It'd be so awesome. <laughs> it seems like a lot of work, but it would be awesome. And. Uh, it is a lot of work. It's daylight till dark, and they're even after dark. You'd have to go and check the fields to make sure the irrigation wasn't running over the ditch. The ditch didn't break. Uh, they did it a lot different then than they do now with these uh, water sprinkler systems. They didn't have it then. They had irrigation ditches where they siphon out of the ditch into a furrow to water the fields, and it would run all night and all day down half a mile furrows. Wow. And as a kid, like I even, an, Like an aqueduct, almost. I mean, like a whole system of, yeah, of irrigation, but not <clears throat> automated. And Grandma and them had about uh, 50 white Canadian geese. That what they for? Would, that they would turn loose. Uh, they'd clip their wings so they couldn't fly. And uh, they would turn loose in the fields to hoe the weeds out of the cotton. Uh, or out of the maize. Uh, and these geese, during the hot summertime, if their feet got hot, they would just sit down. If the ground was hot, they would just sit down and wouldn't, and wouldn't walk. So they would melt tar and put the geese feet in this tar to make them shoes. <laughs> okay, so all of you animal people out there that love animals, I'm, uh, ignore that. No, I'm kidding. It's it was practical. It was what worked. And this and is what worked. And, and, and instead of hiring people to go hoe their field, they would. Uh, it's ingenious. And this is this can opener is not working. Uh, let me geese, geese would uh, here. Let me see. It. Here, you take over. I can't get it to work. I don't open a lot of cans, and I can't get the can opener to work. Maybe I'm just not strong enough. Well, that's a tough can. It is. Maybe it's an organic can. <laughs> okay. It's a John Wayne can. <laughs> it's real tough. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we have all our cans open here. Uh, and we're just going to put all of these ingredients down. One thing I forgot to talk about is the bone broth. Uh, bone. This is turkey bone broth. I had it in the refrigerator. You might have seen me walk over to get it. 
Uh, this is an organic bone broth. It's really great if you can make your own bone broth, but if you don't have the time or the resources to do that, or it intimidates you, we'll have a lesson on bone broth one day, but um, then you can just buy it in a container like this. It's not gonna have the same nutrients as making your own, but it's still great for you. I always say eight ounces of bone broth during cold and flu season uh, a day, and you're probably gonna be able to avoid a flu shot if you take one, so. Um, okay, so we're gonna put this little bit down as it still kind of deglazed the pan here with it and get some of these yummy things up. You could also add a little water if it felt too thick for you. The other liquids in this are going to be, um, this is the Ranchero beans. They smell fantastic. And I always wish that you could smell everything that we're cooking because it smells so good in the kitchen. Dad had turned off the heat uh, so we didn't overcook the meat while we were talking and he's turned it back up now. So you're just gonna plop all your ingredients right down into the soup there. You wanna give that a stir somewhere. All of these cans are recyclable. You saw me cutting up some of the greens off of the onions. Uh, this is just going to add an extra dimension and a beautiful color down into the soup. Uh, this is the raw corn. You're just going to plop that all right down into the middle of the soup and then it's going to cook there for 30 minutes. Uh, you can rough cut your green tops. You can fine cut them. Again, if you have somebody, maybe a kid or somebody in the house that's sensitive to greens, you can fine chop these and disguise them a little bit more uh, in the soup if, if you need to do that. And uh, we're just going to put all these down in there. things flashing red but there's no picture yeah the the screen went off yeah so yesterday I think I just said this but I'll say it again we had this beautiful episode that we thought we recorded and this say we're making this again did it today because we messed up yesterday or I messed up yesterday and did not hit record so uh, you yes. live live and learn yeah so you people are costing us twice as much <laughs> We, we love you so much that we're making it twice. Now, this is so beautiful. And I'm also gonna make some cornbread uh, to put down into the, into the soup. And, or not down into the soup, excuse me. I'm gonna make some cornbread to have with the soup. We were talking yesterday that it would be really great to make a, um, a really stiff mashed potato, fresh mashed potato, white potato, red potato, whatever you like and put it in the bottom of your bowl and then pour this over the top of it, it would be amazing uh, if you wanted that extra starch. So, um, so we're gonna let that cook for the 30 minutes and uh, we'll be back with a finished product. It's been, uh, it's been 30 minutes, we have turned the fire off. I have made a pan of cornbread. I just used a mix that I got at Whole Foods uh, for the cornbread and it looks really yummy. So I'm going to take the lid off and show you the stew. I'm going to hand that to you. It's going to be hot. Can you grab it? Thank you. My lovely assistant. Here's what the stew looks like when it's finished. It's really, really, I just wish you could smell it. It smells so good. So when we were not recording, we were talking about how, what a great meal this is, not only to feed a lot of people, but to also, if you're just feeding a few people, um, feeding a few people you can you could have this for lunch you could have this for dinner um, you could have this for a snack it has a lot of protein in it it's got some vegetables in it um, if it when I ate it last night I added a little cayenne pepper you can salt and pepper it to taste I have to tell you this batch tastes great with nothing in it um, a little cayenne pepper though really adds a little kick to it and you could add it to the whole pot as you're cooking it if you like just a pinch just to give it a little bit of heat and uh, we're gonna cut can I have another knife a knife One of these. yeah that's fine I'm gonna cut up this cornbread and I work out of town and uh, I make my own lunch and I work in refineries and uh, you can't just go in and out for lunch so I have to bring my lunch and uh, sandwiches get old every day so I'll make something like this and I put it in these 
little freeze container. Oh, yeah. Freeze them up and take them to work with me with the cornbread. So you don't even need a refrigeration for that. You can just pop them in the microwave or stick them on a stove and you're ready to eat. Yeah, I just put them in the microwave at work. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. Yeah, so this little portion right here, I mean, you can see here, this is a small bowl. Uh, this is going to be a great lunch portion. If it was dinner for me, I would want a little more. Don't forget the mashed potato trick. And uh, I did just want to talk a little bit uh, about mom and dad's kitchen. You can see that it is undergoing renovation. This is actually a new stove, but they have they live in a 100-year-old house that just turned 100 years old. When was that, dad? Yeah, 100 years old this year. Yeah, 100 years old this year. And they've renovated the entire thing, and they are redoing the kitchen. That's going to be one of the last things that they do there. So we'll come back, and we're going to record a... Uh, episode with my mom and she's gonna make us something yummy and we'll see how the renovation came along okay thanks for watching uh, if you have any questions you know that you can always email me from my website go to kitchens.com uh, if you want to be on go to kitchens you should send us a video or send us an email with your kitchen ideas and we'll consider you for an episode have a good day thanks for watching again ask me chat with me hang out with me Learn with me, pen me, go to kitchens.com.